Happy to be here for the month and very interested in our next topic. Uh, record 7.3 million adults in Canada are struggling with obesity with new celebrity weight loss trends popping up every day. It's important to know what's safe and what's not. Joining us to debunk the weight loss trends of 2023, we have sustainable solutions for you. Dr. Gower is here. Uh, doctor, so much interesting information here. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Listen, when we talk obesity, I mean, the easy thing that we often think of is you're eating too much. It cannot be that simple. Yeah, there's a, a variety of different factors that drive obesity, and it's really become an epidemic all over the world. There's genetic factors, there's environmental factors, there's obviously diet and exercise. We're leading more sedentary lifestyles over the past several decades. But really, the I think the number one cause for the rise of obesity has just been the under-treatment of it. Uh, until recently, obesity just hasn't been recognized as a disease. It hasn't really been taken seriously by the medical and scientific community until now. You know, now we're entering an era where there are new therapies available for obesity and patients have alternatives uh, to just die and exercise that, frankly, haven't really delivered the results that most patients want. You know, I'm looking at the numbers, uh, 7.3 million adults being sort of deemed obese. So what's, what's behind some of those numbers? Often we hear the term BMI. It's all very kind of confusing. Is it about weight? Is it about height? What is it about? Yeah, obesity is technically measured through body mass index or BMI. It's you take your weight and divide it by your height squared in kilograms and meters. And for a BMI of greater than 30, which, you know, imagine someone who is, you know, around six feet tall and over 200 pounds, uh, that's, you know, a body mass index that's just below the obesity cutoff. And so for most people uh, who are just overweight, they don't even qualify uh, by the BMI criteria to have obesity. So most people who need to lose 50 or 20 pounds, they're simply qualified as overweight. Once you get qualified as having obesity, then you become eligible for certain therapies. And of course, uh, if you have severe obesity, you may be eligible for bariatric surgery or some even more uh, serious interventions. You know, often we look to celebrities and we go, gosh, I want what they're having. And I think of the video we just saw of Chelsea Handler celebrating, I think, what, 46, 48 or something like that. And I'm like, okay, what's she doing? Uh, Elon Musk, uh, Rami Vader. Let's talk about this very popular and maybe controversial diet trend we're seeing out there right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the celebrities, influencers have been abuzz with uh, Ozempic and other new uh, GLP-1 drugs, as they're called. And these are drugs that are really not to be taken lightly. Uh, these are injectable drugs. You need to inject them uh, every single week. And they can lead to severe side effects, nausea, vomiting, pancreatitis, and even certain types of cancers, uh, including thyroid cancer, that previously had only been reported in animals, but now is being reported in humans as well. We have to remember that with these drugs, uh, they are hormones, and they are going to cause a modification of the underlying hormonal balance inside someone's body, and that can lead to side effects. Uh, but most importantly, these are drugs that truly need to be taken for a lifetime. Once you stop taking these drugs, the weight will come right back on. And in fact, in some patients, the rebound weight gain will leave you at a higher weight than where you started. Uh, and so we need to be really cautious uh, about using these drugs. They need to be uh, taken under supervision with a physician. And really, it's a conversation between the patient and the physician as to whether these drugs uh, are going to be the right fit. And for many patients, they are not going to be the right fit. And those those patients may be eligible for several other alternatives that are now available uh, both in Canada and around the world. Yeah, and I think, you know, the rebound weight, that's one thing, but then it's the health issues that can happen from that and from taking those hormones. So let's talk about some other sustainable solutions. Absolutely. So obviously, first line therapy is almost always just diet and exercise. You know, there are now several different types of diets that patients can try, different types of exercise plans, even ones that are medically supervised. So they have a little bit more rigor to them and a little bit more structure to them. Uh, but then there are also non-surgical alternatives and also non-pharmacological alternatives. You know, at Allurion, a company that I founded actually over 10 years ago when I was at Harvard Medical School, we developed a medical device for obesity that's paired with a digital platform platform and a behavior change program. And with regards to all of these weight loss interventions, it's important to remember that weight loss is one thing, weight and maintenance is another thing. And so no matter what type of therapeutic you are taking, whether it's a drug, whether it's our device, whether it's even a surgical intervention, you really need to monitor your weight loss, monitor your behavior and change your habits and change your lifestyle. Because otherwise, no matter what you do after it's done, 
the weight is just going to come right back on. And so, you know, that's what uh, you know, I personally believe is extremely important in this space and it has been missing for several decades. And that's what we're trying to bring back to it uh, at Alluria. Doctor, thank you so much. Great information and obviously sustainability is key. Thank you so much for all that info. Wonderful. Thank you, Don, for having me. Appreciate it.